everyone, it's Pastor Abby Eccles here. We've got some scripture for us today and then a quick devotional. This is from Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going to read verses 1 through 8 and then jump to verse 11 through 13. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. Amen. Friends, did you know that you are called to ministry? You are called to ministry. Yes, not just pastors and preachers and teachers, but you, all of us, in our own special and beautiful and wildly wonderful ways, we are all called to ministry. Why? because we are followers of Christ. Because this grace which God has given us gives us faith in Christ and the Holy Spirit works in and through our hearts to help us hear and know that God is calling us, that God has given us gifts that we can use for the good of God's kingdom here in this world and that we all can do our part for equipping the saints for the work of ministry. How do we do this, you might ask? We do this in our baptism. And if you haven't been baptized yet, that's okay. But I'll tell you, there are a couple of vows that we say in our baptism. And whenever we baptize our children, we ask, will you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness? Will you accept Jesus Christ as your savior? Whenever we enter into that baptismal covenant, we are taking up God's promise for us to live according to God's call. We also are further called into ministry whenever we gather together for communion, whether we do that in person or even at home. Whenever we gather together for that holy and sacred meal, we are spending a moment to repent of our sins, but to also remember God's deep and wildly wonderful love for us. We also continue this work of ministry by worshiping God, by studying our scriptures, by singing about and to God, our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. We also are called into ministry by serving and loving our neighbors as ourselves. We do this through service. We do this through compassion and justice ministries. And what's cool about this is that we can do this all in so many different ways. Because in our scripture here, we are told that there is not one part of the body that is better than another. All parts are important to make this body of Christ work with Christ at the head, right? Here in our scriptures, we're told that some are called to be apostles. Some are called to be prophets, some evangelists, some teachers. I would also add that some are called to be volunteers, to be missionaries, to serve on committees, not just for the church, but also here in our community to plan events, to plan service. Some are called to be doctors and lawyers and nurses. Some are called to be stay-at-home moms, to be retired, to travel, to see the world, to stay close, to nurture, to work, to love and live. These are the things to which God has called us because of God's grace given to us all the days of our lives. What's cool too is that some of us are in fact called to be pastors 
and here in the United Methodist Church, we celebrate that. Every year, we do this thing called annual conference. And at annual conference, we have this thing called a service of commissioning and ordination. And that is where pastors who have gone through um, this kind of long and interesting process um, to become pastors. The pastors of the church here at First Methodist and the pastors that you have known and love who have come through here at First Methodist Sherman, they have all gone through this process in some fashion or form. And um, tonight is a really wonderful and special night because Pastor Flor Granillo is going to be commissioned tonight at 7 o'clock at the service of commissioning and ordination at St. Andrews. And we're gonna post a link in the comments of this video so that you can make sure that you have the right link so that you can watch that moment happen. Pastor Aaron and I have some friends who are gonna be ordained tonight and they are going to be entering into yet another moment, another uh, piece of the journey of their call to ministry. It is a beautiful and special and wonderful moment and we hope that you will all join us as we watch that together and as we celebrate Pastor Floor here in this place and wherever you are as she takes that next step into her call to ministry. So my friends, we are all called to the work of ministry. It looks different, it feels different, but it is all for the good of God and God's kingdom here on this earth. May it be so, and may we all celebrate Pastor Floor tonight. Thank you, and amen.